I'm currently using my Steam Deck as my main game development machine, as well as my main PC. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. And all in all, thus far it has been a good experience for me. I'm able to do what I need for my day-to-day -day activities, as well as my game development needs. Anyone else doing this? Comment if you are. I got myself a 512 gig OLED Steam Deck and after using it two and a half months I can tell you yes it is a PC and Steam OS is a fully functional operating system that is based on Arch Linux. Some tools might need to be switched if you were a previous Mac or Windows user but everything I needed was here in this Linux version. In this video I will address the tools I use for game development on Steam OS, my game development workflow on Steam OS, I will do a very basic performance test on a couple of 3D projects in Godot to see how it performs. I will talk about other apps that I use for day-to-day -day activities on my Steam Deck. Also I will tell you what hardware I'm using for my setup, I also talk about from what hardware I switched to Steam Deck and how it compares and I'll do a very broad and superficial review on how my gaming has been on Steam Deck. And also I will address what drawbacks I have experienced using the Steam Deck as my main PC. This video might be kinda long because I got a lot to cover. I'm making this video because I was searching for this type of video when I was trying to switch to Steam Deck. The problem was I didn't find anyone using it as their main machine. Just some experiments where people are using Steam Deck as their main machine for a week or so. Maybe it exists but I didn't find it. So here goes. So let me start with the most important thing for me, the game development tools I use on my Steam Deck. I still use Unity for my main job, but for my personal use I decided to switch to Godot. Godot 4.2 in my case to be specific. It runs great and I have not really experienced any issues with it. Starts fast as always and feels the same as it was on my Windows machine. I mostly do 2D games so the performance is not an issue at all, but I will test 3D performance later in the video. A sprite is my main tool I use for the art. The game I'm making is pixel art based and most of my small game jam projects are as well. Everything works as expected and I feel no difference from Windows or Mac regarding the workflow. The A sprite was not natively available on Arch Linux based OS, but it was available on Steam. Only drawback that I'm experiencing is that I can't open the file directly. I need to open A sprite and then open the file. And also keep in mind that the A sprite is emulated using Proton, so it will have Windows file structure in which you will need to access Steam Deck's folder when saving files. But that doesn't bother me too much personally. But you can always use Liberal Sprite that is free and open source and is available on the Discover Store. It's almost the same as A-Sprite. Previously A-Sprite was open source and this Liberal Sprite was maintained and developed by the previous A-Sprite open source community. We interrupt this program to bring you... Some news about the Liber Sprite. I just found out while editing this video that the Liber Sprite was kinda glitchy for me and I found out that it was only on 4K resolution. When I switched back to Full HD or reduced the screen size, it was all good. So my suggestion is if you have a Full HD monitor you can try, but better use the Steam Zay Sprite if you can. Krita is my go-to open source alternative for Photoshop. I personally like it much better than GIMP and I feel it resembles Photoshop much more, but you can still get GIMP. Krita is a great and recommended tool and I was using it also with my Windows machine. For version control I used to use Source 3 and Bitbucket. Unfortunately Source 3 is only available for Windows or Mac. The first thing that I found was Git Kraken. The UI was very nice and everything seemed fine. I connected my Bitbucket account and found out that you have to pay $2 if you want to use private repositories. And I wasn't about to do that using all open source or free software. I found a tool named Giddy App. It was pretty nice. I had to create app password on Bitbucket to use it with Giddy App. There also is a small nuisance with this that I have to enter the password every time I push changes to Bitbucket. A bit later I found an app called Gitnuro and this application's UI was much better, so I'm currently using this one with the same app password I created in Bitbucket. Note that my needs are very simple, I have one branch where I push all my changes or revert to previous version if something went wrong. For screenshots and screenshot editing I found Ksnip. This works fine. So everything that I need for game development is here and I don't feel that I'm missing anything when I'm making the game. There are some minor cons and I will address them later in the video. About my game development workflow on Steam Deck. Basically it's very simple, depending on if I was playing last or using the desktop mode, I either plug it in the dock or just wake it up if it's already docked. The sleep mode is actually very nice, you can put it to sleep while gaming and resume instantly. The same goes for desktop mode and work. Since I wanted to do a basic performance test for Godot on my Steam Deck, I found this Godot benchmark project on GitHub. And so I ran it. The part where I saw it struggle visually was the part where 2000 rigid bodies collided. This happened for 2D as well as 3D. The rest of it rendered fine. And here you can see the full benchmark logs and feel free to pause and read it in detail if you like. 
Also, I tested a couple of 3D projects just to see what the frame rate would be like. I added a simple FPS counter to each of them to see what FPS I would get. The first one I tried the classic Sponza and it got me like 80 frames. When I turned off OBS Studio for recording, I got like plus 20 frames. You can see it here. I also ran GD Quest third person controller. This got 40 frames while recording and 60 while not. Then I tried Tesseract Reflection Map project. This was the project team that struggled with the most. This has a lot of lights, reflections and so on. And this got me like 28 frames on average. So this was a very basic non-technical performance test that I was able to do with my skill set and my knowledge. And this is probably not the optimal way to test it. If you are more of a technical person, just read through the benchmarks I provided previously. Now about the other apps that I use for my Steam Deck desktop mode. We as code for web development, as I occasionally might get a side project here and there, FileZilla for FTP needs, and Putty for my SSH terminal. OBS Studio for screen recording, YouTube, and streaming purposes. If you're familiar with the software on Windows, you should feel right at home. And here it is running on my small screen while I'm recording. For video editing, I chose KDN Live, and I will tell you about it after I finish editing this video. I have finished my editing with KDNE Live for this video, and it has been fine. I've used Adobe Premiere before, and I had no problem switching to this. For me it was even simpler, and I like the animation system much more. The rendering took a bit longer than it did on my previous machine, and one time I was doing other tasks while rendering and managed to hang the system and needed a hard reset. One of the things that I was worried about when getting the Steam Deck was 3D printing, because I have this boy here. But turns out everything works fine, Cura is available, and I have not experienced any problems with it. For web browsing I used to use Chrome, but Firefox thus far has been a much smoother experience on my Steam Deck. With Chrome I had a bunch of bugs on YouTube, Udemy and some other websites, hopefully the updates will fix it. But for now Firefox is just fine for me. Also occasionally I use Blender if I need to convert any 3D models or something like that. This also runs fine for me but don't quote me on this one because it does well the things that I needed to do but I'm not sure how it would perform on advanced 3D modeling or movie production. I also use Discord for Discord stuff and Spotify for Spotify stuff. So regarding the hardware the main thing I use is this JS Aux dock. I chose it over the Steam Deck's original dock because it had two display inputs. It had DisplayPort and HDMI. I wanted to be able to connect two monitors in the future and that's why it works fine. I use Steam Deck as my secondary screen for YouTube. I also have this 32 inch 4K Philips monitor. I also have this Keychron keyboard and a basic Logitech mouse. And this is how the dock is connected. The dock is plugged into the Steam Deck. Here's the power cable, HDMI, keyboard, mouse, Ethernet. For recording I get this basic capture card, M50 camera and this Rode NT USB mic. And this is basically how my everyday setup looks. Now why I switched and from what hardware I switched. I switched apartments and now I live in a smaller space when I'm waiting for my house to be built. The PC and two 33 inch monitors were just too big for my current situation. This Steam Deck as a portable all purpose device for me is great at this situation. I also can easily go to another room and connect it to my wife's monitor when my son is going to bed and basically just take the device with all my stuff everywhere I go. But truthfully, the real reason is I saw PS Portal, then I checked out Chitaki for remote PS5 play, and after that I just went on a research rabbit hole for two days. I was trying to find reasons to buy it, convince myself it was a good idea, so I thought maybe I replace my PC and free up some space and use the Steam Deck for everything. And so I did. I was really not sure it would work, as in if the Steam Deck would be capable to be my main machine. But it did, and here I am. My previous PC had Ryzen 5, 1600X, 1060 GT 6GB video card and 16 RAM. And the Steam Deck hardware compares pretty good to it. The desktop mode seems to run great and doesn't have all the bloated doo-doo that Windows has. It might be doo -doo. The gaming in handheld 720p felt about the same as it did on my full HD setup. And some games like Cyberpunk felt and looked better on the Steam Deck. This is probably because the Steam Deck has a very nice OLED screen with 90Hz refresh rate. For Full HD desktop mode the games felt like 20 frames slower than my previous setup. Only tried a few so don't quote me on this one. And search for YouTube videos on frame comparison if you're interested. So now let's talk about the drawbacks I experienced. The first thing is when the Steam Deck is docked and falls asleep in the desktop mode, I plug it out and after I plug it out, I turn it on, it doesn't switch to Steam Deck's desktop. This has happened for me in the desktop as well as the gaming mode. But now I learned that I need to wake it up and only then unplug it. Setting up a printer on Steam Deck looks like this. I assume there might be an easier way, but I haven't found it yet. I'm not sure how this goes because I have not set a printer on my Steam Deck yet. For some websites dragging and dropping didn't work, for example I couldn't add an attachment on Gmail and on some other sites as well. 
some work though. Another thing is 4K to Full HD. I mostly use 4K monitor and I have scaled icon size, start menu size, global scale and as well as the font size to fit the 4K display. When I plug the deck into Full HD display everything looks big. I probably need to create a script that switches these options when I plug it into HD display and back to 4K. It's not like it's not usable, it just doesn't look that good. I usually keep the scale at 125%, it is great on 4K display and it's ok on Full HD as well. And of course there's the switching from gaming to desktop mode, but it's relatively fast so it's all good. Also I was able to hang the device and needed a hard reset, because I simultaneously used 3 monitors, played a game on one, watched a Twitch stream on another, and on third I showed my son a YouTube video. So all in all for me these are not big things or deal breakers. I could give you a similar or longer list for Windows and Mac, since I've used both quite a lot. So maybe some of these are deal breakers for you, but they're not for me. If you also use Steam Deck desktop mode and experience some drawbacks, please comment. I'll just quickly run through how my gaming has been on Steam Deck. I played some Cyberpunk and it looked awesome. It also has a specific Steam Deck graphics setting. With this I felt it looked and played better than on my PC. And I think most of the credit goes to Steam Deck's 90Hz OLED display. I also played some Baldur's Gate 3, which I thought would be impossible to play on controller, but turns out it was ok. I also played a couple of CS2 games with my colleague. I played them on desktop mode on Full HD. It ran up to 100 frames, only problem for me was when the monitor was in a 4K resolution and I ran the game in Full HD, light mouse movements weren't registering. The only fix for this was to switch the monitor resolution to Full HD and then run CS2 in Full HD as well. Also played some Rocket League cross-platform with PS5. As expected it ran nice and smooth. Played some Path of Exile on it, on desktop mode as well as on handheld mode. Not a fan how it ran on desktop mode, but I liked it in handheld mode. On desktop mode occasionally I felt some latency issues, some frame drops and some stutters. I played some Enter the Gungeon, I played some Brotato to have some inspiration for the game I'm making. And I also have played some remote PS5 using Chitaki and the best experience was achieved when the PS5 used wired Ethernet. So I had a friend that had a friend who owned Legend of Zelda Tears of Kingdom on their Switch. So he agreed to temporarily dump the game and test it how it runs on Steam Deck. We tried using Emu Deck to run it, everything ran fine and he said that it even looked better than on his Switch because sometimes for him the visual quality would drop on his Switch because of the dynamic resolution. And all in all I like this experience, I'm able to just pull it out while my son is watching a cartoon and squeeze in a quick gaming session. And with this I somehow get more time to game, but don't feel like I'm wasting too much actual time. Since I got the Steam Deck PlayStation 5 has been mostly off, just some usual NBA 2K games with my friend, and some MK1 matches. For me who also has PS5 gaming on Steam Deck is fine, and in my opinion this is the best handheld gaming device there is right now. Here he is, the biggest handheld gaming device of the universe. Hopefully this video helps you to evaluate if you want to use Steam Deck as your main desktop. For me it works, it might not work for you, so make this decision with caution. And I'm also planning to get a regular PC once my house is done building and I can move in. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Like if you did, dislike if you didn't. Comment if you want to say something. This comment if you don't want to say anything. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Unsubscribe if you don't. Bye.